Oh, oh like uh, they didn't. They didn't die. No, 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 no. The one that's like at the like the pop rock. No, the no, white stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, one day, one day, one day, one day. Kind of taste. No, one this is Microphone Check, hip-hop from NPR Music. I'm Franny Kelly. I'm Ali Shaheed Muhammad. Yo, I'm Kent, a.k.a. Jam. I'm June, orange the berry, the sweet or the juice. I'm Cream, shout out. And the homies call me P, and we're Overdose. Yeah. Over- yes. Hey, what y'all. up? What up, Overdose? How y'all doing? Chilling high. What's going on in South by Southwest this year with you guys? Everything. A lot of shows, a lot of moving around, networking. Yeah. A lot of pictures. No sleep. No sleep. Haven't hit a studio yet, though. I want to hit a studio with somebody I don't normally see. Mm-hmm. That happens a lot here. People don't really talk about it, but late yeah. night. Yeah, I want to hit a studio. I haven't hit one yet, but I'm going to hit one before I get up out of here. <laughs> Who would you want to go with? Anybody yeah, I don't uh, see. I don't know. <laughs> right now, we listen to Future a lot. Future, Pee Wee Longway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All like the Atlanta trap people pretty much I think it'll be tight Since we do kind of like more of a funk bass mm-hmm. Up tempo music yeah. To get them on that Will probably sound t- kind of fun I think mm-hmm. Anybody? I like uh, Travis Scott If I think we've seen him I try to be like You know what up man Let's do something That makes sense he's dope So I I, I met these dudes named the uh, Something Army It's a rock band They were pretty cool Something Army Emily's Army I don't know they were pretty cool. It's a dope name. I'll do that. I'll do a song with them, too. If they got a studio, <laughs> rock out. Right. How's the shows been? Shows is cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, no matter if, they, like, a lot of people or little people, they still, we have fun. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of cameras. I've been filming with my own camera. I got me a little little GoPro type thing. Okay. <laughs> Energy, you know, we've been stage diving. Yeah. Being wild. I got dropped one time. Yeah, you, yeah, you did. did. Oh, that's <laughs> you did get dropped. Look at me like, you ain't going to jump? I'm like, I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wait. I'm going to do like this so they know. Like, you know I mean? Here I come. I didn't even see you jump. Yeah, that's why. Because he fell in. Straight through. I fell in. I started turning seen up him. in the I crowd. I was like, oh, look at him. <gasps> Whenever you fall, you just got to act like you meant to do that and just stand in the crowd. Just go up to him. Hey, oh, I wanted to be out here with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> They was going up though. This we is not your crowd. first South by though, right? Second. Second. Is and it it's... different now? Um, a little bit. It's slower this year. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the rain though, I think. But it was raining last year. They should have kept Ilmore at the I place they had it last year. <laughs> That's all anybody wants to talk about is how Ilmore is not the same. Uh, is it, it was because last year it was a little different. It was big. That's why. Yeah. It was big. It, it was, was huge. Location. The closest thing to what South by in. used to be. That's why. Like you, you were bumping shoulders with different artists, and you were like a regular. You know, I was bumping shoulders with fans and shaking hands and talking, having having a personal conversation with ASAP Rocky mm-hmm. while taking pictures with fans. Mm-hmm. But I feel like you know this year, um, even that last year when I came, and a, a, I think it was a year prior to that, uh, we were just talking in a hotel room. Maybe when Tyler, Tyler Creator, and Our Future came, and we're jumping off the walls right, and right, stuff, right. and wearing van, dirty vans. That might have been for me as a um, fan of music. The last time that I saw like what South by could do for music musicians, which is to keep us close to the people, mm. and uh, I think that a lot of people just want to pull up in sprinters and uh, wear the chains and just have smoke machines and lights. Yeah, when it's not about that, it's mm. literally about talking to you know shaking hands with your fans and bumping shoulders with mm. uh, people that do the same thing you do. Do you think that is like cross genre or? I think it's money. Hmm. Oh. Somebody yeah. that has a lot of money saw something, a lot of people doing something that they can make, you know, something center, center lives. I won't say, you know, who it is, but it wasn't as many shows. Like, we were talking prior to the show how it was uh, uh, mostly, it would probably be like Wiz is doing a headline and then Currency is doing a headline. Right. And Kid Cudi. Everybody else was jumping on. Yeah. It's not like that no more. Like, you have right. to email them eight months in advance, yeah. and you still have trouble when you go get your bands. Like, right. Mm. We got a couple pop-ups, though. Yeah, we got a couple pop-ups. Yeah. Like, we're not afraid to, you know, rub shoulders with the fans and get our chucks dirty. <laughs> chucks, not vans, though. Mm. Uh, vans, vans chucks, <laughs> Jays, Pumas, Jays. We're not discriminating. <laughs> <laughs> All my shoes I brought out here are through. 
I'm gonna yeah. still wear them. Every that's day, the bro. mission, though. Like that's I what we come out here for. Like I want to see what I memories I can make in these shoes. I lost a shoe. Lost a shoe. Yeah, I lost it out in the public, just walking with your sock on or something. Up. What do you mean? I lost it in the crowd when I was stage diving. Lost it in the crowd oh. and it got wild and I couldn't find it again. And it was just it was a sad story. I think I'm letting the fans sign my whatever the person say. Hey June, you from Overdose? I'm gonna let them sign my shoe today. <laughs> let me get your autograph. <laughs> Are you going to cool. walk around with only one shoe in the rain? No, nah, I'm going to no. take my shoes off. All right, so <laughs> sounds like you guys love your fans. Uh, yeah. So why do you clown them on Boom when you say, um, what is it you say? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, it's, when you say um, they've been waiting, no, no, no anxious. Mm -hmm. They're anxious to get their hands on. Your next joint. <laughs> the intro, right? So, yeah. yeah, I'm like, I was just talking shit. I know y'all so talking. Uh, now that's that's the only power we have <laughs> as artists. Well, like, you know, what you mean to clown somebody? Cream. Cream. When we gonna drop? When we gonna drop our record? Yeah, I'm saying you like, can't drop a you can't drop such a classic song like Laura London and then leave people just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can if you if you trying to build up a you know work. We we had to get serious. Once we dropped Laura London, um, it was really. Just a a song that uh the director the Calmatic when he directed the video, um he was in the studio with us. He was like, "Yo, just make this for the fans, and we're just gonna shoot a video that's fun for the fans." Mm -hmm. And it wasn't supposed to be a project after that. It was supposed to be an album, but that video got us like Pharrell looking at us, and we literally met with every label after that. So it was a process that made the fans wait for it. Mm -hmm. It got serious. Like it was like, "Yo, I'm gonna be able to feed my kids off of this mm -hmm. now." So let me wait. The fans, like, at the end of the day, you're going to get a body of work. And you're going to get to see if you're a true fan of us and our music is going to make amplify us, you know, mm. signing to a new label. And the, the, the fact that we met with every label was, I guess, to us, I know to me personally, but to us as a group, it was like, yo, we was in the back house smoking weed, man. <laughs> like, stealing beats on the net. And now here we are for just doing something that we didn't take no money to do and put up on a, you know, it just mm -hmm. showed us how much power we had. So do you take that kind of like, you know, you're saying like, oh, we're taking it serious now. Do you take that now into your new project? Like with that idea of knowing that this, you could feed your family or do you still carry that like, yo, know, free spirit with it? Or is it a little bit of both? I think it's a little both. bit of both. I think, cause I mean, cause it's a group, you know what I'm saying? So like when it's a group, you know, yeah. Of course, you know, there's a, a mix of everything. Yeah. So everybody got a different feeling at a, at a different time. So I think it's just going to be like a, a you know, you're going to get everything from us. Yeah. Like that's, that's I just think really going into the album, I was like, damn. Like, once people start looking at you, I was like, damn. I got to tell these motherfuckers something. There's kids listening that's going to try to do everything I do. Even if I tell them not to do it, they're going to try to do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, damn, what am I really Gonna teach to these kids effect. to do like mm -hmm. I start thinking, and I got a son now, so I'm thinking about like now when he's three, when I ride in the car and there's some cussing in the car, he knows what sucking my dick <laughs> and shit like that. Like you feel me? Like he, niggas, that, that, he won't say it. <laughs> Don't say that, daddy. Don't say that. It's a bad word. So it is like kind of that that we gotta watch what you say and think about what you say before you say it. But you still gotta be you at the same time too. Yeah. So it's kind of hard. So it's like a. On the fence type thing. Line, yeah. <laughs> uh, How you feel about it? Well, me, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I think him and me the same. Again. Like I can't. Ask me the question again. I'm the same. <laughs> ask me the question again. <laughs> <laughs> can you ask me the question again. <laughs> just about being serious versus just, well, you know, me. More free. I'm the youngest in the group, so I'm I'm starting to get more serious. I've been more serious, really, you know. So it's just like. It's, it's really go time. Yeah. <laughs> go time, and you know the ball is on our court. So let's, you know, let's work it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's get it done. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's try to put everything in one project. Cry, laugh, smile, everything. Mm. So you know you get that from. That's what they get from us. That's why. That's, that's why people mess with us. You know, they right. really like us so much. It's, it's genuine. You know, and like, we still it's growing like, too. You can feel it that it's real. Like it's not. Fake. It's not like put together. It's not forced. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. that. Like, I love the, the the dynamic and the way. Like, I mean, there's a, a such a, in the scales of balance in terms of topics and of hip hop that it's just like everyone's talking the same thing, mm -hmm. you know. But you guys are like bringing these topics, which rooted somewhat in what the scales, the heavy side of over 
unsaturated aspect of hip hop, but then you guys are bringing and talking about things in a completely different way, like monogamy, for an example, and the way that you guys do it. It's so smart and refreshing. Thank mm-hmm. you, bro. Like, is that like, is I it, is, is it a natural? Not it's doing natural. what like everybody else is doing. We right. don't want to sound exactly the same as yeah. everybody else. But you still that's sub, that's that, that, like, you know, you know, he said monogamy. I think from us growing up in L.A. together, us, a lot of people or actors move to L.A., mm. ball players move to L.A., or have, like, a girl in L.A. that, you know, that <laughs> it's just, you know, that's what the land of L.A. is. So, I mean, I feel like we went to school with these girls, and so the way that we voice it, we just go through experiences that we had. We won't say, like, you are this because you are this. You know, it's just, this is what happened to me. She did that. Mm. And if you can relate to it, you can relate to it. At the end of the story, <laughs> if you think she's whatever we called her, then you, you know. Mm. So I think the way that we make it fun and make light of a serious situation is really, you know, our little pocket that we fit into. Which is laugh. one of the most dangerous things, probably. Mm. Somebody that can make you laugh. Crying, man. What do you mean it's one of the most dangerous things? Well, my dad used to always tell me, like, a comedian or somebody that, can, you know, could make you laugh. Like, even back in times of, like, you know, like, Genghis Khan or old emperors, they would have, like, comedians and people that could make them laugh around them. They would be the closest to them. The joker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they would have the most pull. And a lot of people, like, you know, comedians, even today, like, when they walk into a crowd, Cream saw Chris Rock, and everybody just opened up and just let them walk through. I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. <gasps> Nobody even really asked them for a picture. <laughs> really? <laughs> if you can make people laugh at themselves, uh, yeah. you got them. Because when you're laughing, your guard is down. You're not thinking, your guard not up. It's the most dangerous. I'm making you smile with every word I'm saying. That makes sense. <laughs> so imagine if I hated <laughs> you. Not, you yeah. And I'm making you laugh. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. It's a dangerous thing. We don't hate you. but People get scared of people like that. Yeah, they recognize mm-hmm. the power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's some of what happened to Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what happened. What happened? The people didn't want you to know about Dave Chappelle, like how he lived his lifestyle. He didn't live in Hollywood, like around girls and stuff. From my knowledge, he lived like in a on a farm or something like that. In Ohio. In Ohio. Have so, you seen Bro lately? Like that's how I'll, something happened. I mean, I want to study. He's ready. <laughs> he was. He's ready for war right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I aspire to be like that. Like I want to learn more about agriculture. I want to grow uh, my own food. I want to mm-hmm. teach other okay. people. Uh, well, my people, black people, how to mm-hmm. grow food. Yeah. Um, uh, and would I you feel, say he can't even, can't even cook? cook. <laughs> oh, he, he got some spices on him. He got some spices on him. Right. He can but grill. At the same time, um, I feel like that that blueprint. It's kind of like a, a lot of people might don't even know about it, but kind of like Booker T, uh-huh. who a lot of uh, people kind of, that black people kind of label as like an Uncle Tom or something like that. Okay. And really, if you look at like his baselines about agriculture and giving back to your community and saving and starting your own uh, school systems like they did in Tulsa, which I've already, you know, mm-hmm. mentioned before, which got taken also. Um, but Dave Chappelle was that model. Like he he's... Working with people like most deaf, he started. He did a movie where he bought all of these different <laughs> black artists in the middle of New yeah. York. His name. And was since black. you don't, you know, want to dress up like a woman, like every black man that has something, you know, of value has, you know, they castrate you. Not castrate you, but yeah, it, it's kind of like that. The media like hung them mm-hmm. to me. So why why did we not see? If that's that's a huge struggle because that you know it stops it stops commerce obviously but not that you know money is anything but just in terms of um, what how you can benefit from a mind like that you know like the things that you're saying you know why then is it not addressing the music enough because we don't control what gets played on the radio do we not. You say what? Wants we to, don't. There's no such thing as black radio anymore. When James Brown, which is my favorite artist, was coming up, ha! <laughs> he owned his own radio station that he used to sign shoes in front of. That does not exist anymore. You want to buy what Birdman has, which is a fucking, sorry, you know, Birdman, but you have a fucking bus that fits a car up under it. When it's dudes that are in Compton, like, shooting over shoes. Didn't Trap own stake in Hot 97 at one point? Did who own steak? Tribe. 
We own steak in Hot 90. Steak? You're funny. <laughs> did she, no, you didn't. Did you own is, steak that's in a making a mockery. That's radio making mockery station? of somebody though. No, saying steak. I did not own any steak in. I think the point of what I was saying, well, why not? No, I didn't own any steak in. Are you joking? Really? <laughs> no, I thought that Tribe had invested in a commercial radio station in New York. No? Where'd you hear that? <laughs> I think you I, I think she's just sipping some of you guys' funny juice right now. <laughs> No, we did not, but I think I think the beauty, uh, and I know Stevie Wonder on the radio station, and the the fact is when you don't have the resources of things, that doesn't stop the creators of content. We're creators. You guys are creators, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and I think you guys are living in an age now where it's the evidence of because you don't own something doesn't stop the ability to control something, mm -hmm. you know, like the way that your music is distributed. Right now, you know, there's so much control that you have and, and how it's being pushed and your connection with the fans is different and probably better than what any label can do for you right now because they're confused, right? Mm -hmm. So radio is powerful, but it's, I don't think it's as powerful as it once was. Mm -hmm. The only place that plays like their people's radio, I think it's the only state is Georgia. When I go down to Atlanta and stuff, I hear people who, like, like who not that big, but they on the radio still. They play all they people's songs. Mm. Like in Cali, like in, in, in LA, you only get an hour. Two to three, the new at two, that's the only West Coast music you're gonna hear. Everything else is And it's the most like important, the and has been the most important way of communicating since, man, for a while. Um, mm. Reason why I still say radio is when a child, like he said he has a three year old, when they hear the same song over and over and over and over, and this nigga don't act like a bitch, like that's, that's let's start there. How about that? Like that's one of the most things. I can't control any other rappers meeting up in a, in a building with a Dame Dash, Spike Lee, or Tribe Called Quest, and we have a closed door conversation about how to change, you know, the sound of music or what people should do. Uh, you know, sharing business, tra trading business ideas between each other, mm -hmm. connections and all that stuff. Basically, you know, doing for self. I can't control other men to do that. Right. But I can control what I say. So I'm going to make a song that's how I want to make a song. Right. Radio all and programming. if a lot of people can relate to that, then they'll relate to that. If Kendrick wants to make an album how he wants to make an album, and people can relate to that, it's cooler. I would rather hear I Love Myself a million times. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, the radio is about money, and but like you said, it yeah. is it is up to us as the creators. Like we do control our destiny as artists. Like just because we're on a label, and they might not do everything that we want them. Because like you said, they are confused. That's yeah. you know, and when you yeah. don't have ownership, when you have never owned nothing, and your family has never owned nothing, when somebody gives you something, now that's a whole other state of mind that some people capitalize off of. Which most black people we don't own shit. So, like, when you give us a record deal, like, we've never owned shit. Mm. So, no, I'm not thinking go to the radio. I'm thinking I need to put food in my mom's crib. Like, I get to finally, like, you know, yeah. reimburse my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking about I need to meet up with, yo, every HBCU, and I want to just tour HBCU. I'm thinking, yo, I never went to college. Mm. This shit got me, like, I can give my sister some bread who's in college, live in Atlanta, I can pay her rent. I'm thinking shorthand. Not ownership. Right. When in the long run, yeah. ownership will work out for us the best. So we gotta change our frame of mind. Yeah, and we are. We're the fact that we're come, you know talking to y'all about this. We talk about it behind closed doors already. Yeah. We're growing. We're growing. <laughs> we're growing. Yeah, that, and that's a good thing to hear. You know, so it's a coming in. Is it coming out in the music? It is. Yeah. 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 And our new album, it really does. Like you, I'm pretty sure, if you listen or if you go back and listen, you're gonna see growth. You're gonna see a lot of. Like the the topics and like it's still fun, yeah. still you know what I'm saying lighthearted, but you know the way we able to we all kind of got a grip on our what we believe in now, mm -hmm. so it's kind of starting to come out more clear. I love that moment. I remember <laughs> when that moment it happened for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean it went from like you know native tongues to you know where we all would meet out in clubs and just have the best time of our lives as like 18, 19 year olds, and then it was like, oh shoot. This is real. <laughs> this is real. This can change our lives. Like, you know, people get eat off of what we're doing now. Like, it was like, er, no more clubbing. We just locked in the studio, and then everything began to make sense. Everybody started rapping different, everything, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's yeah, a good time. It's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You got to capitalize off of that spirit as an artist. I mean, I we think we all know what like writer's block is. Yeah. You all get creative blocks, even if you do radio. It's like, yo, like you were saying, like, y'all don't have to get ready for interviews. Like, I was saying that they don't have to get ready for interviews. We get ready for interviews. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. To be clear. That's what I mean. Like saying that you had to. So I'm sure it's times where it's like, you know, you feel, you know, like, damn, like, how am I going to get through this one today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's time where it's like, yo, I'm on point. Yeah. Like everything I say is gold. Mm -hmm. And like you said, when you can capitalize off of that and you can voice that through the music, that's the diamonds and the goals. And the I'd be so mad when I get a block. Oh, I wreck, yeah. I wreck my car. Into a pole, I wreck my car. Yeah, I got a block. I could not come up with nothing. I'm like, I'm not about to record. Just record. Just to record. Yeah. I'm over that part. Like, yeah. if I'm not saying nothing, then I'll really mess with it. I'm not putting it on the track because that motherfucker going to keep playing and I'm going to hate it. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> every time, you might love it, but I will hate it and I will not want to hear that song ever again <laughs> in my life. So I just don't record if, I, if, I not, if I'm not feeling it. Just. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to just write, though. Yeah, like with right. me, you just gotta just like write it down. Just write, even if it's terrible. You write like, voice notes while you're driving in the car. Everything, and just let it out. You gotta get it out. I'm gonna start a podcast and be all about people's voice notes. <laughs> For real, oh, that would be crazy. That'll be tight. That'll be tight. Oh, 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 iTunes already <laughs> when you plug your phone in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, that'll be tight. A lot of ideas. <laughs> we'll copyright that. <laughs> yeah. This is me like you sending it to the patent person. office or whatever. I right. should hold up the paper with today's date. Yeah. You're on record. You on record. Uh -huh. Yeah. How will you know when you've like hit your highest? I don't think you ever do. <laughs> yeah. Um, really? But like, what's it? Can you describe that feeling when you know you just made something and it was really, really good? Uh, like uh, creatively? Yeah. It's. I don't know. I think it's the like when you want to listen over and over and over and then critique it and be like, I could have did this a little different. I could have, I could have said this. It's like you know what I'm saying. But that's really a lot. I mean, we artists. It's mm -hmm. like even though it's words, it's like this is paint on this 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 track forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I like. I feel like that's when I feel like I really like when I really like something and I I I, I just break it down over and over and over again. That's when I, I feel forget like I that I like something because the world moves so fast now. Everybody uh, wants so much. I just want every time I say, "Oh, that's tight." All right, I need another one. Let's do another mm -hmm. one. Like I need another one because one ain't gonna ain't gonna help the people. It's it ain't true. gonna satisfy the people. Yeah. You gotta keep them pushing out, push out, push I'm out. More spaced push out, out now when I record. Like I like to take a couple of months off or a month off now. <laughs> I just get repetitive and angry. Yeah. Oh, like that's that. why you, I think that's why people take a long time for albums too because when you do music like you say like you're going through something in your life at that time so you're going to keep like rapping about the same thing six months later you might not feel that way about that subject mm -hmm. yeah. so you, it'll be different that's why it'd be like alright I recorded this in a year I felt all type of ways in that year like <laughs> and, mm -hmm. it, and it made the music better yeah so you guys feel like you raised a bar creatively you, you, you credit your um the director of the video, like visually, in, in addition to what you're putting out musically, to, uh, is sure. there a pressure about the visual? I think we're still in I think yeah. we steal the yeah. best the ideas pressure. between each other's, man. Like, it's just what feels the best to us, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember seeing, like, Buster Rhymes' Give Me Some More video. <laughs> and, like, I just knew, like, I'm going, I'm going to shoot video. <laughs> like, I like this video, but I'm going to do something one day. Or Missy, sock it to me. I want to start shooting yeah, videos in, like that. So, so when it comes to the videos, it was, we know it's a creative bar. video for somebody else song. Like yeah. <laughs> we know we set a creative bar for videos. So that's a little bit... Um, Freaky. Yeah, that's Calmatic, but we, we always let those flow. It's either like the week before we shoot or a couple of days or sometimes the days of where we come up with scenes for videos. Yeah. That's more be, of a freestyle. Yeah. It has um, to be good. But ideas. music is a, it's a process. Okay. Like we want to get the right instruments. We want to get the right engineer. Like we'll get a record mix three or four times. Mm -hmm. Like he said, we like to go through different things. So if you multiply him going through something mm -hmm. times three other people. I got like three verses to every song. I just, yeah, <laughs> like every song, I don't know what, like I'm like, all right, I got this verse, I got this verse, and I got this verse. Which one y'all like? <laughs> hey, which one y'all like, man? Yeah, what you <laughs> like, got man? on there? Just keep the one on. That one. <laughs> yeah, but with our visuals, though, I feel like we we have somewhat raised a little bar, or at least went back to when they were dope. Yeah. Like, mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
we all right, we take from that. Like we got to make something. Like you know, what's the one where far side is going backwards? Drop, drop, drop. Ooh, that is that Ooh, sparked us. Jones, That's what sparked us. <laughs> we saw Spike. We met Spike we day here. <laughs> yeah. We met Spike, like, and that's when it was like boom. Yeah, so that's where it, like you, you know, want to set a bar yeah. though, really. Yeah, you have to. Well, yeah. some some people think from a visual perspective when they're recording, some don't. It's just go with the flow, or it's like, well, whatever the record company say or who should be here. But then there are people who have like specific ideas, and mm-hmm. it's just a matter of partnering up with someone to help you bring that to. Right. Well, we only That's partnered up easy. with the, the videos that you've seen. We only partnered up with our director, yeah. like our record label, um, except for Rich White Friends. That was the first yeah. major one that we got, like you know money for it. but other than that everything was shot on a on a regular camera and Freak mm-hmm. still shot he it he paid for it <laughs> Freak still shot it <laughs> yeah Freak still shot the, the, the last one but it was like yo alright we got some money for this he had, a crew. he had a crew he had a crew <laughs> he had a crew in he the chair he had a crew he had a crew in the chair <laughs> It was fun, man. It was fun. Have you guys uh, traveled to Europe yet? No. Uh, I ain't never been out the country <laughs> except for Mexico. Oh. <laughs> like that got change my first oh, me, and Cream, oh. me and Cream got lost in San Diego and ended yeah. up in Mexico. Oh. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, Drew, wait, hold on. <laughs> well, isn't fly- Is that the last exit? <laughs> the Mexican flag. Is that a Mexican flag? Is that the border? <laughs> oh. oh. I'm like, man, it was a swap meet on the freeway. It was a swap meet on the freeway. I couldn't believe it. I think he tried to sell me a turtle. <laughs> in a wheelchair. In a wheelchair. Roll up. Hey, no, we. I was tripping. I saw him roll this way. The wheelchair dude rolled this way. The next I think thing you he know, had he a twin. rolling back this way. I'm like, he had a twin. Or something. <laughs> bro was moving. He on. had a twin, bro. How did you go back? Did you have your passports? No, we just. Nah, I mean, we're turning around. <laughs> we're turning around, <laughs> man. And we don't know. We from out of town. We from out of town. <laughs> man, he sleep. <laughs> Hey, so you, you ever been with a friend, like, and they be like, you be like, I know Jay-Z. He say, I know Jay-Z. And they be like, call him right now. He be like, he out of town. <laughs> <laughs> out of town. We had a homie like that. Uh, the new one is, he sleep. <laughs> That's the call. That's the Coachella. Yeah. Where you at? Hey, yeah. Man, he's late. <laughs> so when you guys, you guys go on tour in like a 16 passenger van? Or nah, you're we ain't got there that. yet. It's y'all not there yet? Not even yeah, 16. Yeah. We too bad. We too bad. We, 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 we too bad. Dodge caravan. Shout out Dodge. Still got a TV and a little video game. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, you can hook the game up. You got to move your seat and everything. Oh, We had the homie driving with glasses one time. I said, can you see? He said, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I said, get your ass out the driver's seat. I'm driving. We just oh, we got the three rooms. Yeah, yeah. I just took a picture, drive in. Yeah, we oh, just my. got the three rooms. <laughs> we got two rooms last year. We just got to our, uh, each having our own bed. Just got there. So it's still, we still thugging it. That's what we like to say. This is the That's best right. times, though. Like, it mm-hmm. really, there's no, there's no, 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 let me tell you. It's changing. That. It's changing. Uh, that. That. I no. hear a lot of people saying that to me, and I want to tell y'all, fuck you. Shut up. Fuck Shut the up. DJ, huh? Damn. <laughs> no, really, really. Appreciate this time because. It's the fun times, yeah. man. It's like yeah, it's the magic, sure. and yeah. and you guys will create the best stuff. Like when you just said, you know, getting our own bed. That's hilarious because our <laughs> <laughs> coming to town on my NPR budget, not my Tribe Called Quest budget. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sharing a room with our producer David, who's sitting back there, and um, David's part of my production squad. Okay. He's dope type. But when we walked in the room, and there were two queen beds, and I was like. <laughs> Thank you. Yo, it took me back 25 years. I was like, oh. You had a look on your face. I was like, oh, yeah, this is like this. It's not how nah, it's it is. No, it's cool. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. You know, I'm, I roll with the punches, but I just, it took me back to that time and I started thinking. I was like, and I told David, I was like, yeah, I remember when me and Fife used to share rooms. And it, at that point, when we got our own rooms, and it was just like liberation. But in that moment when I checked in yesterday, I thought about all the fun I had, like when we mm-hmm. was together, mm-hmm. like was together. <laughs> together through all that. So that's why I'm saying to y'all now. So we stayed up y'all together last night till like eight in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had no choice. Switching <laughs> rooms. Switching rooms. Room. Room. Switching room to room. We was driving a bike <laughs> to the hotel. We got us a bike. We was driving a bike to the hotel. I still got scrapes on my jeans. 
from my bike. Yeah. I fell on Dude, the you bike. You want to get some grass stains tatted on your yeah, knees? Yeah, I'm getting grass stains tatted on my knees before mm-hmm. we leave. Oh my God. I'm in the field. Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the field, man. Man, I'm asleep. <laughs> man, he's asleep. <laughs> Do you go have a. Uh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Once uh, you have a calendar for the next record, what's going on? Ooh. Fill us in. Ooh. Well, we Ooh. turned it in. The album is turned in and done. So now we're just, you know, it's marketing. <laughs> we you some know. June boys, though. Yeah, we, like, we, like, we love the month we of love June. We love June. If, it, if it all works out, that'll be tight. But we just <laughs> dropped a record with uh, ASAP Ferd, mm-hmm. who y'all have just had on the show, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and so next, we're going to drop one that we did with Pharrell. And that shit, man. Like it took us thirty minutes to make it. Can we can we talk about fuck the DJ for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> what inspired that? Okay, we had just got off tour with ASAP Ferg. Just got off tour. We went all around the US. And I remember I went to the studio one day by myself. Boom. I went up, went home a couple of days. I just came gone. back and they had this record. And all they had was his verse. And when he came on, I just remember him going. Fuck your DJ is all was, about my producer. Yeah, all my I was a homie to my Count producer. I'm like, man, like don't nobody do no music about their producers no more. Back in the like day, it's like my producer is this, my producer is that. Like it was like the, a, this was shout out to my producer real fast. It felt like black okay. punk. Like if there's <laughs> such thing as that besides, you know, uh, what's the band called? Death Brains. Death. Bad Brains. Death. Oh, Death. Death. Oh, those guys before from, the yeah. Ramon. Yeah, Death. Bad brains type. It's like it's like, but it was like, yo, like this is against the <laughs> rules. Like you're not supposed to say yeah. fuck it. Not the cornerstone of hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> not like that, but that's what people say. That ain't how we meant it. it but that's just... not how we meant it. It was like on some like, hmm. it's about my producer and our producer is our DJ. <laughs> 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 like, fuck you. Like the way we used to we used to intro the song because we did it last year. We made the song before last year, South by Southwest. <laughs> so we used to intro it like he would throw a, a top. <laughs> Attach on and say, Fuck my DJ. Start clowning the DJ. I'll DJ. start clowning on him, man. Do some jokes like about that. him. And he, yeah, he, he got salty that. about it. <laughs> it was, hey! Yeah. On it, on it, wow. on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new South Bar. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking tour, but it's kind of like, I, if you could say, like, like, was, like he said, we listen to James Brown. It's kind of like our funky drummer, man. Yeah. Oh, you know? so, I really want, I really want people like the DJ should just say like after fuck your DJ but instead of saying my producer, just splice in your name. Fuck your DJ. That's all about DJ. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like, splice I your name like in. Man. We wanted to make once we heard it like in its entirety. Um, we were like, yo, other DJs can use this to like you know go at each other. <laughs> yeah, it just absolutely. be started. You know, you can get a lot out of it. But we did it mean like. Fuck the DJ. No, I get it. It's dope. I like it. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the next man. Yeah, we. So that's, June, that's, huh? what, that's what we doing. We I'm waiting. I'm thirsty to come out. Trying to force the issue. Huh? New stuff that I want people to hear. I'm thirsty in June, huh? Hey. Yeah, I mean that's my question. So I feel like we're in a special time in hip hop right now, but mm. it's partly because like people made a lot of stuff this summer when things were real crazy, and now like the people get to hear it. Yeah. What is that? But like, why? Why the delay? It's the golden age. Because we could age. just drop it, though. It's the golden age. Everybody yeah, is good. Everybody, it's a lot of good artists. It's a lot of good artists. So you got, y'all got to take y'all time. Oh, future booming right now. I gotta wait to drop my shit. Hold on. I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So by, that's what you mean. What by do you money? mean by like Some things? Some producers don't, don't want you to drop. Ferguson. They should. Ferguson. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I took people came. Well, I understand what you're saying, but you um, people came to me and were like, "Why is hip hop not talking about?" what's happening right now. And I said, oh, hip hop, A, has been, you just haven't been listening. Yeah. But also, like, people are writing these songs right now. Like, people went home that night and wrote mm-hmm. songs, but you're not going to hear them for a yeah. few months. Because so si- when you no get money. a situation, too, when you get assigned to a deal, like, producers not just trying to let you drop for free no more. They're not trying to let you they put their beats the out. They're like, hold on, we need to be on the album. I need to get my check. Yeah, but I, I like <laughs> I the see. fact you okay. got to get the paperwork right. I like right, the more, right, like, right. I saw, right. like, in that time period, Dang, the only really one I know more did it, but I saw J. Cole was like in Ferguson when it happened. Like I would have liked to see that more as opposed to somebody ready to go drop a record. Problem and bad luck was out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> like I wanted to get a plane. Jeezy ticket. was out there. Hands up. Yeah. Hey, I the homie get took his hands ticket. up picture like this. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. But I think it's important that people like 
Well, and then what you were saying about the radio plays into it too, because like, are those songs going to get played on the radio? And by radio now, I mean top forty radio. And nah. then do they have to have a certain sound so that nah. you sneak Depends the message in? Depends on who in? you are, low key now too. Because like Kendrick is on the radio, but he creates his own radio songs. Like yeah. he still be yeah. conscious. That's of his all. Songs. But you got to be smart about it. You got to be able to, like Jay Z said, move in a room full of vultures. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be able to do game. it. And that's what our music, I think, does too, especially our album. Like you know, we, we we splice in a lot of serious messages um, in our in this in album, especially right. in a fun way and a, like a super serious way. Where it's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> then the next song is okay. I'm back to this. Right. Like, so we're not going. You're not going to hear the records if they're not making no money, in my opinion, mm -hmm. unless you get we like it's our job to force the issue. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? They need to hear this. Like we got to make it tight, make it move on its own. So then they got, we ain't got no choice. Yeah. We got to hear it. Everything oh, full circle yeah. now. Though. I said the underground is becoming mainstream. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even the way that yeah. people drop their records, it's like, yo, you dropping it without a release date. Yeah. That was shit. <laughs> that was shit for a dollar for it. I thought, <laughs> How dare we put out a release? We ain't knowing that shit was going to come out. Right. Dude, the day it got mixed, it's out. <laughs> How about that? Well, I'm looking forward to the next installment. Yeah. We are too. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting that out because we've been recording some new music that's not going on there that I can't wait for people to hear. Oh, I just want. I'm so, that. Yeah, I was like, yeah. okay, now. We're All right, let's get this out so we can start drop this one. <laughs> Send it to us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll if y'all have, have a speaker or something here afterwards, we can play you guys something. Yeah, a couple yeah. of tracks. We yeah. did a song with a uh, organized noise. Oh, dope as, yeah. Dope as fuck. That's some Terrace Martin. Uh, we'll play, yeah, Terrace Martin. Um, Pop and um, Oak. Two from Terrace Martin. I DJ like DJ Khalil. Khalil. Mm -hmm. so. I like the Pop and Oak songs, man. They real, yeah. they real universal. Yeah. Okay. Pop. They Pop and Oak. <laughs> no. Pop and Oak. Pop and Oak. Yeah. And LA's where it is. I just moved to LA, so. Hey! hey. <laughs> Turn up with your boys, man. It's hot. Is it better than New York? Yes. It's the it's weather. Cheaper. The weather. It's cheaper. It's not really cheaper. It's, it's oh, different. I bought yeah. a pack of six for like $11 in New York. Oh, <laughs> Try like, 14, whoa. you got a deal. <laughs> Try 14. <laughs> No, eight, you got to try 14, yeah. you got to deal. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. It's different. It's it's def it's a different experience, you know, and L.A. is so dope. It's you know, spread really out. Dope. It's spread, spread out. out. Yeah. It is spread out. The weather is amazing. <laughs> And um, it's just it's a it's a lot calmer than New York. Everybody's yeah, sure. just like stacked on, yeah. and you know you don't really know what or realize what that does to your psyche from infancy up until you get away from it. You know, just being stacked on like there's a there's a yeah. there's a feeling and a um, urgency, urgency, a sense of angst that occurs. I admire but, that. But yeah, and that's, that's what, what helps. I, I always create it. Like, yeah. Yo, you keep me on my like, ace, yeah, like, like the ASAP dudes. Like yeah. they always yeah. up. It's like, like y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I gotta yeah. stay on that's my. What I, I don't always like. tell the homies from like LA to be like, "What is New York like? I ain't never yeah. been to New York. Like it's like the Valley, <laughs> on LA, of and Long Beach, all <laughs> in on LA on top of each other. That's hectic. That's a whole lot of people, a whole lot of emotions, a whole lot of spirit. Yeah, it is. So from, from a you know painting a canvas is definitely it's it's very strong you know mm -hmm. and it's it's made its mark. But so has has the, the canvas from L. A. You know, which sometimes you need that intensity and sometimes you yeah. need it yeah, to be calm cool. or yeah. for you to really like get into it. You know, so the first people to just legalize weed. We chill in L. A. Like, like, we, yeah, everybody, like it's I, sunny. Everybody it's act sunny. Like, like if you bump day. somebody in L. A. If you bump somebody in L. A. It might be a little problem. I remember I was walking down at. the street in New York. At. I bumped into a person. I, I turned around to say sorry. He was already down there down the yeah. street. Like oh, he would didn't give a fuck. Like whatever. About five times. Yeah, bro. I mean, All day. <laughs> oh, I was talking to Killer Mike about that one time. It's like Killer Mike might, from Atlanta. Yeah, you might fight somebody Ooh. if somebody bumps into you in Atlanta, but in New York, you're just like. Yeah, like, like, you go to go to <laughs> they're really gone, man. They walk yeah, so fast. <laughs> Yeah. Like that's what LA needs. That we need the New York mentality. We need a New York well, it's grind. happening because we're all moving there. There's some right. assholes yeah. in New York too. Nah, but we it's all get assholes to LA. In New York. It's, it's all like assholes <laughs> in New York though. It's all assholes. No. New Yorkers are mean. High standards. New Yorkers are mean though. Y'all don't drive like New York don't drive like us though. In LA, you gotta fight for your way. What? What do you mean we can't drive? Let's not have this. They can't drive. Like it's nowhere to drive. Like nobody drives. No, no, 
Oh, All I God. see. I'm you about to remember your roots right, right now? Hey, yo. To stand up for your city? I always oh. stand up for my city. Your Is there any city? gas stations in New York? I've never seen yes. a gas station. There <laughs> are fewer. That's a real estate conversation. That's a money question. Out of Manhattan. They started um, taking all the gas stations. Like, out of like, Manhattan yeah, yeah, because that real estate was so valuable. So now the cab drivers, there's like nowhere to get gas. They got to go real far away to get gas so their money gets hurt. But it's all because of like speculative real estate and like Russian money. I was just saying, well, last last time we went, I was like, hey, I've never seen a gas station out here. Out in LA, it's a gas station damn near every corner. Well, yeah. <laughs> we spaced out. <laughs> Niggas need gas out here. You, you going far. <laughs> you going far, bro. You need some gas. <laughs> Well, we should wrap it up because you got places to be, hey. and we want to hear your new music. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so. But yeah, thank but you. Thank for, you. Thank you all for having us. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Look, looking forward to the future. <laughs> <laughs> I have five. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, that was just water as loud as you can in the back. Y'all wasn't really fucking with me. Here we go. Drink more. My name is Mick Jenkins, straight from the south side of Chicago. Hit this Indonesia, tell me how you feel. We got hella chill, alcohol, never was the I really didn't start drinking water myself.